What is up, everybody? How's it going? Here we are. Another live stream. Um, going to do some pretty simple stuff, as usual. Probably no surprise at this point. Um, so tonight, uh, we're going to spin up some scuds and some leeches. And... Uh, to do that, we are going to use some of these sexy little dubbing brushes. So I've got a handful of them here in different colors. So some of these are custom blends. Some of them are pretty straightforward, but we uh, have them on the site now. Uh, so if you don't like making them, you can... Uh, Head on over there, customtroutflies.ca, and get you some. They um, make things easy to do uh, a lot of, and then they make them super, super durable, too. Uh, these scuds that I tie, the we call them the WMD, because um, they're pretty indestructible. Uh, but I think I tied like two or three of them last year, and I probably didn't even get the third one wet. Um, and I fished them quite a bit. This thing and the little uh, straggle scud are about the only scuds I fish. And uh, this one probably gets tied on 80% of the time. So um, this is a Daiichi 1120. Uh, if you want to do them on a 1760, you can do that too. Um, and for this color, which is, this is a UV gray. Um ice dub this one so kind of that grayish bluish color um, but again color is not important here we have a huge variety on the site uh, so you can get kind of whatever you want but just the simplicity of this uh, pattern is kind of what makes it killer uh, all right so i've got uh, a silver 764 bead on there if you want to add some weight, you can. Uh, that's a tungsten bead, so I don't need to add any weight. And um, you don't have to go way into the bend on a scud hook. So um, when uh, you tie on a on a flatter shank hook like a 1760, it's it's more of a swimming bug, but. You just don't crank it way down into the bend when you tie them. And then it doesn't look so dramatically hunched over when you tie them on these hooks. So <clears throat> there is, uh, these are made spinning dubbing and wire. So the wire is what I want to tie in. So I just grab a wee bit of that kind of near the back here and just crank on that pretty good with some nice tight wraps. And then bring it up. This is like the most stupid simple fly on the planet. But it uh, gets it done. So the dubbing brushes are made of wire. Yes, 100%. So it's part of what makes them durable. And it's actually part of what makes this pattern. Um, you've seen the WMD, I'm sure. If you search through the uh, our feed, you'll see it over the last couple of years. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's stupid simple, but... It catches fish. Um, Susan's in here, ladies and gentlemen, from Chinook Wind. Susan has also sponsored a bit of a giveaway. So I am going to give away the flies that I tie. And Susan is going to chip in a couple spools of um, Textream dot thread. So that's pretty sick. So I can really crank on this stuff to kind of position it and and uh, get those wraps nice and tight. And all you see me do is just wind that thing up the hook. So it looks a little gnarly right now, but just give me a minute here and uh, I'll show you what it looks like done. <clears throat> so you, I think most of you know the drill to win. Stick around. Uh, ask questions, comment, 
however you want to do it, but I, I run through the uh, comments and people coming in and out at the end, and I just select a winner. So we got uh, four spools of thread and uh, some nice flies. These things go on at ice off, so you're going to want to have them. <clears throat> so I just tied all that off behind the bead. A couple wick finishes. And I actually remembered to pull it out. I think it's time to make a new one because I don't have much for Velcro left. She's pretty weak. But um, what's your favorite color for the WMD? Probably uh, like a kind of a golden olive, if you will, or a, almost a yellow. But it's not really a yellow, but it's kind of a yellow. I don't know. I ran out of the dubbing and I haven't found it since, but I still have a few of them tied up, so I'm okay, but this color is good, olive, um, but yeah, that yellowish business, I don't know what it is about that. Now, I don't know if this is going to show or not on this thing, it never does, but if you look at the picture in the story, we're going to give this thing a haircut. The wire, when you brush it, the wire actually shows through on top here and creates your segmentation. And uh, you can see, like when I brush this down, it's a pretty flat back. So you don't need to put any UV resin or blah, blah, freaking stuff on there. Um, it's really simple and easy. You just brush it down and then we give it a haircut. So, <clears throat> first what I'm going to do is get rid of most of it. And then I just come in this way with my scissors. So, I'm just kind of angle it a little bit this way and a little bit that way. I just don't want to trim it off blunt. You don't want these fibers under there to be like straight across. Same reason you wouldn't want to cut the tail on a leech. You don't want to... Uh, just trim those all flush because it looks doesn't look very natural so just come in and trim that all up you don't have to get crazy with it but no tail no f feathers no stuff just a dubbing loop with some dubbing a hook and a bead and this thing will last you an entire season i promise you like it's uh durable as all hell that wire just doesn't really get destroyed the one thing you want when you're tying them is to make sure you're cranking on it when you're wrapping it <clears throat> But aside from that, as soon as that thing gets wet, that wire on top will show through. You'll get wicked segmentation and the fish will crush it. So, ta-da. Like, hopefully I didn't bore you with that one. But um, there it is. So, super easy. And crushes. <clears throat> Let's zoom out here. Um, all right, what do we got? Scudly. Yeah, it's Scudly. If you're only fishing cronies, you're probably missing some fish. And that's coming from a guy that fishes a shit ton of cronies. So, um, yeah, I would recommend... Uh, these and leeches for before and after the crony stuff. They're just staple food, so. <clears throat> there it is. I'm going to spin one more of those ones up. And then we'll do some leeches. <clears throat> Super easy, yeah. I mean, and you can kind of like really sit there and if you want it to be slimmer, 
you can just sit there and brush more of it out and trim it and brush more of it out and trim it and kind of thin the profile down a little bit. Um, the brushes come pretty well set to, to tie these things. They've got the right amount of dubbing. But if you find they're a little bit too thick, even while it's still on the wire, you can come in here and just kind of, so you can thin that out. So it's a little bit thinner up here than it is down here. So you can kind of play with that stuff, but <clears throat> uh, 10 to 14, probably. Um, and the if I'm gonna tie the Hyalellas, uh, then I'll tie those on a 16 or an 18, but I won't tie them with this uh, this style. I tie them the straggle style in the tiny sizes. Um, you need a picture. Well, go look at the story. There's a beautiful picture of one on there. <clears throat> uh, yes, that is a Stonfo Vice. Other colors, like I say, olive. Um, <clears throat> you can do like a orangey, pinkish color. Um, I mean, just look at the scuds in your, in your local waters and, and match the colors that you see. No, never underestimate the power of a shrimp and never underestimate the power of a simple fly. I know there's lots of complicated stuff out there now and I get questions all the time about it. Do I need to tie this? Do I need to tie that? And my answer is always no, 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 no. Most of you have been following long enough to know that we tie pretty simple stuff. And if you see the fish that they produce, then uh, I guess that would uh, answer your question. So I'm just going to thin this one out just a wee bit. The thinner it is, the closer together the wire wraps can be. And that um, allows for a little bit more segmentation. So you can see I'm just thinning that out. I, uh, I didn't change the bead on this one, but you can, uh, you can certainly change the bead. So on an olive one, I'll use a gold bead or sometimes I'll throw on a chartreuse bead or something bright to catch their attention. But for the most part, I just, uh, that yellowish color that I was telling you about, and then this gray and olive are about the only uh, colors that I fish. So again, every couple wraps, I give a really good tug and just make sure that wire is nice and snug. Uh, the straggle string that I like is five millimeter it's actually UV Brill is what it's called, I think. Straggle, Brill, whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's that's the stuff. And there's photos of that fly in the feed as well, if you want to see. It's basically just like this, only you wrap the straggle and then burn the top with a lighter. But... Um, Yes, these are pre-made brushes. You can buy them on the website. For sale, ready to go. Um, I can't keep up here. Uh, clear nail polish. You can use nail polish if you want. I just use crazy glue. <clears throat> um, do I believe in, oh, these are long questions today. Like, is a new moon really that much better? I don't. Uh, how do I answer this one? I don't even, I don't give a shit what the moon's doing or what the lunar, solar, blah, blah stuff is all about. I just go fish and hope for bugs to hatch and hope for fish to eat. And if they're not eating, I hope to make them eat. And whatever the moon and sun and stars are doing is up to them. <clears throat> all right. that out of there yeah if you don't have UV Brill uh, you need it that stuff is like 
fish magnets. <clears throat> You can throw some super glue on your thread wraps if you want. <clears throat> or just put a dab in afterwards. Asking for a friend. Can you put a worm on the hook to catch more fish? If you want to put a worm on your hook, you go right at freaking head. <clears throat> gets her done. And haircut. That's it. Um I wouldn't call them special tools. You need to make a dubbing block and and uh, you certainly can make them yourself. The reason we put them out is because a lot of people don't like making them themselves, me included. Um, but once you get them, they're super easy to work with. A lot of people get frustrated and snap the wire and this kind of thing and that kind of thing. And I get it, it can be a pain in the butt. So. Now, if you just want to get them, get them. <clears throat> you get a good handful of flies out of each brush, so I mean, it's it's certainly worth it. What's up, Justin? How do you fish scuds? Uh, in the water. <laughs> Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can fish them. You can hang them under a bobber. You can wind drift them on a naked line. There is no one way to, uh, to fish any bug. If you look at them, they can sometimes be on the move, so you can strip them quicker. Uh, you can just drift them. I mean, it's, yeah, it kind of depends on all what the fish want, really. <clears throat> all right, number two, done. So, simple, simple. Do they hang vertical under a bobber? I couldn't tell you how they hang under a bobber. They just, uh, I mean, scuds are all over the place. So it really, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter in my opinion, but I don't fish balance leeches it either, so maybe my opinion doesn't matter on that topic. <clears throat> All right, groovy. Now, we've got some. Throw that one in my pile, yeah. Maybe. <clears throat> uh, these ones are done on small wire. Kind of depends on uh, on what you're doing. Um, actually, you know what? Sorry to bore you, but there's lots of questions coming through, so I'm going to tie two more of these, so then I'll have eight flies to give away. And I'll maybe uh, add a couple other ones. So we have a dozen. So this one is uh, gray and uh olive this color here so mixed which is kind of slick rob's got all kinds of different colors in the 
on the store so you can get olives and black and reds for leeches and yeah it's good stuff <clears throat> a dozen sounds better maybe I'll shrink it down to half a dozen so that's like if I'm looking at that that's pretty ideal uh, dubbing loop thickness so again, I just pluck a little bit of that dubbing out and then wrap it. This one is done with a chartreuse wire um, so that it's got a little bit of pop when it comes through, but up to you what color wire if you're making them yourself but the wire is suited to each color on the ones that uh, we have what thread I'll give you one guess can it can it reach oh oh yep that's a uh, text dream a dot so the th same thread we're giving away is the thread I'm tying with and it's because I like it <clears throat> So yeah, this color is, uh, I thought you guys might like this color. It's um, It's got the grayish UV tones of the gray eye stub and then the olive uh, looks pretty darn good. These ones are sick. This color combo is one of my favorites. And yeah, they look buggy, and yeah, they don't have a UV resin back, and yeah, they're goofy looking, but I'll tell you, don't knock them till you try them. Uh, typically, you fish scuds in the shallows. Not uncommon to, to, you can fish them deeper water if you want to. It's one of those food items that if fish see them, they're going to eat them most of the time because they're just always around. Some of the lakes around here, the interior are absolutely ridiculous. Like you stand in the water to launch your boat and your feet are just covered in them. So there we go. Got some legs. And look at the profile. Like we talk about profile on chronomids all the time but if we just do a little zoom city here like the profile on that is pretty scudly so i mean it's one of them uh things that they see that they don't see a bajillion wires and a big uv thing and flashy shit sticking out the sides like unnecessary <clears throat> They're super cool to, to tie and to, to look at and, and photograph and that kind of thing. But if you're doing this to catch fish, I would focus on this kind of stuff. <clears throat> All right, one more of those, and then we'll move on to a leech. Easy, easy, easy. If you're just getting started or you don't have a lot of time to spin up a ton of patterns, um, yeah, I mean, this is the kind of shit you're going to want. And 
when that one gets wet is when that chartreuse wire pops through and uh, really gives a pretty sick segmentation. <clears throat> Yes, you do need to try Textream Thread. I think I'm uh, probably a year or so with it now. Um, or it'll be a year this spring, maybe. Um, but yeah, Susan at Chinook Wind has it and I would highly recommend trying it. I just got tired of the color lots with UTC. Uh, they were super inconsistent and UTC frays really easy. Um, and when you go to whip finish, if there's a fray there, it'll just shred on you. And it's just, yeah, this stuff is quite a bit more consistent. The ADOT is nice and thin. Um, but it's super strong. I'm a bit of a bull moose in a china shop when it comes to thread. So if it ain't breaking on me, then it's probably not going to break on you. Justin ties a shit ton of flies every year uh, and that's what he switched to full time now so he mentioned he's not going back so I mean if that uh, doesn't tell you how good it is then I don't know what to say but yeah it is good stuff. It takes a little getting used to. There's some um, things that you got to kind of figure out. I tend when I'm tying small bugs, I got to spin it a little bit more. It cords up a little quicker. Um, but if you've watched me tie, then especially cronies, then you know that I tend to spin my bobbin every time I drop my thread, just as a habit. So to me, I don't really notice it as much. They do have a midge thread, so you can um, make it a little easier on the smaller bugs. There's not a huge color variety of that stuff yet, so um, the A dot for me is just peachy. If I can tie 18 scud hooks with this six dot or with this A dot, I mean, then I'm not uh, don't need a huge uh, don't need to change it really. That works for me. So you can see by doing that vertical cut thing, I don't get a straight across look. So it looks way more buggy and natural. Bada bing, bada boom. It's just too bright or what doesn't matter all right next okay I don't even want to give those away because like that could be my year supply right there you know maybe I should have I should have dubbed the giveaway a year supply of scuds as long as you don't break them off then uh, you'll be all right. Uh, that was Ice Dub. Light olive and gray mixed together. Hello, Moose. What's going on, fella? Hey. Eh? <clears throat> all right. Now, so I think we're going to do, I don't know, I got three leech colors here. Rob's got a bunch of them. 
on the site. These ones I have here. So this is a UV black ice dub with a touch of red ice dub mixed in, which is pretty sick. And then this here is just a black and purple semi seal, deadly just on its own. And this you may have seen the video for. I have a leech that I call the beat down leech. And that is essentially the color for that leech. Um, so I got some black marabou and some burgundy marabou. So I'll twist up uh, a couple of these. And yeah. The black and purple one is pretty deadly. Sam Thacker, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> All right, so Daiichi 1760. I've got a red bead on this one. Beat down leech is a killer. So there's somebody that obviously seen the video, tied the fly, and reaped the benefits from the sounds of it. <clears throat> uh, you know what? I'm going to use this black UV ice dub. <clears throat> grab the wrong marabou this is like the best marabou i've ever had i can't remember who makes it i usually save it for my own stuff so whoever wins these gets some sick marabou but fluffy a little bit of shine i mean look at that feather dirty 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 See you, Justin. Black and red is killer, and we do have those uh, brushes made in the black and red. Some people say, well, why don't I just make a dubbing loop out of thread? Whatever. It's just not the same. So, uh, actually, that's a size 10, uh, 1760. So it looks uh, a little bit bigger because I don't often tie with big hooks. <clears throat> now with these leeches, I leave a little gap behind the bead and that's just to sink the wire into when I wrap it up. So right up here, you can see I'm, I'm uh, down under the bead, but I will bring it back, and then that tail is pretty good right there. You could shorten it a little bit. About the body size length is uh, what you're going for. And then, just like the scud, tie in the brush and wrap it forward. That's it. Like I said, sorry to bore you. Now, I don't tie flash in my tails. Um, I just think it's a step that's not necessary. Um, the only reason I say that is because when I brush this out, it's going to um, be all up in the tail anyways. So, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, you can use a brass bead for sure if you want. And then just add some lead wraps or just fish it that way. Totally up to you. <clears throat> I 
This is a custom color, this one that I do. <clears throat> the scuds are done, my friend. Uh, there is black and red on the site, yes. <clears throat> so now, you come in and beat this thing up with your Velcro and like the easiest leech you've ever seen. And they come out like perfect, right? So you know when you try to dub a body and it's all like chunky and uneven and that kind of thing? Well, have a look at that. That's not chunky. That's not uneven. That is straight fishy. Damn. See, I really don't want to <laughs> give these away now. <clears throat> and yeah, super quick, right? Like tie in some marabou, one material, wrap it up, brush it out, we're done here. So, super, super easy. If you leave the tail a little bit long when you're out on the water, you can always shorten it down. You can never add when you're out there, but you can take uh, away. So, I'll leave that a wee bit longer. And... Uh, <clears throat> so for these bigger flies you could switch up to the 6 dot thread if you want but one nice thing I like about the A-dot is it's strong enough to uh, to crank down on things like this you noticed I cranked on that one pretty good when I tied it off I cranked on the scuds pretty good when I tied them off and it's not breaking so um, that makes a wee bit of a difference for sure. <clears throat> My damn screen keeps going black. Do you do balance leeches? Never. Closest thing I tie to a balance leech is a like a head turner bead. That is about all you'll see me with. <clears throat> so I've probably shown this a bunch of times, but a little trick: if you spin your bobbin um, counterclockwise, when I go to lift up, I don't know if you can see that. See my thread there? It's jumping to the left. So it just allows me to capture that marabou and shrink it down. Sometimes your thread will want to jut off to the right on you and it makes tying stuff in a pain in the ass. Just spin your, spin your bobbin. <clears throat> uh, so that tail's about the same length. Maybe it's a wee bit longer. Can just trim that up. So, I don't go very thick with my tails either. I keep them nice and uh, nice and slim. Balance leech is a negative. Yes. Uh, I got nothing against them. If you want to fish them, by all means, fish them. But I say this all the time. The day that I get my ass kicked by one is the day that I will start fishing one. <clears throat> that is yet to uh, happen, so I have yet to start fishing them. There's a lot of added work in tying them, especially if you compare them to something like this thing. Uh, yeah, a lot of extra work. So I'll stick with this. And you just I just kind of tie it like I do hackle, like I'm just sweeping the fibers as I go. And then when I get up to the bead, I try to peel myself off a nice thin spot. So you can see right there, right by that bead is super thin now. So it's mostly just wire. So I can crank that around on this underside and then it makes tie off nice and clean behind this uh, bead. <clears throat> you don't end up with a big band of thread there or anything like that.
and then some nice tight cranking wraps. And then when you whip finish, your thread is actually tucked in behind the bead. So it doesn't, uh, it's not exposed. So you put a few whips in there and that's not going anywhere. So you can see like there's a demo on that thread. Like this is a size 10 hook in a Stonfo transformer. And like it is flexing hard. That's a 1760, so it's a strong hook. Like I am pulling on that thread and it's not breaking. So just throwing that out there. UTC. <clears throat> so you can see you get all this marabou. It looks buggy AF. If you want to tame it down, you could put it in hot water, but I don't even bother. Um, just sweep it back. And then all that, those longer fibers get right back into the tail. And you can um, shorten them down if you want. These are on the bigger side of what I would fish. A size 10 is about where I tap out with leeches, unless I'm tying like the big stripper ones that uh, I think I've done before. But yeah, this kind of thing is, uh, like that is a sexy ass leech. I'm just gonna throw it out there. <clears throat> All right. Whew. Somebody's catching some fish with these flies, okay? Like, I'm telling you, I like giving away crons and all, but. Our tech stream, uh, I don't know about that. I don't, uh, I don't go near that place, so I'm not sure what they sell down there, but Susan ships all over the place, so you can order from her if you like. She is a local BC company, so you're still uh, keeping the money local. <clears throat> All right, what do you say? We've got the black, blue, and purple, or the black and purple, black and burgundy, I guess. This is uh, semi-seal, uh, black and blue with purple ice dub. This is just straight black, purple, or purple burgundy, whatever they call it, uh, semi-seal, which one? Black or purple? We'll call this purple, we'll call this black. First one to get three is what I tie. Black, blue, purple. Black, uh, burgundy. I don't know what that black burr is. Purple, beat down, okay, beat down it is. All right, I was gonna try and do a burgundy one, but okay. I don't have to change threads, so that's nice. <clears throat> All right, we're doing the beat down style. Good. <clears throat> so again, just leave yourself a little gap on that, uh, behind that bead. These tails are a little bit shorter, but that's okay. Those other ones, whoever fishes them, will probably have to shorten them up a wee bit, but. <clears throat> Crank that marabou down. And here we go.
you can use the if you want to just use the uh dubbing for the tail you can just mix it up and tie it in like you would uh, <clears throat> I go back and forth on dubbing for tails versus marabou but marabou kind of wins out most times it's tough to beat the movement So same thing, I'm gonna slim this down when I get near that bead. Try to get it down to just wire. Don't really torque on it. And then scoop that wire up on the bottom. Bing, bada boom. I think the biggest, one of the biggest things I like about these brushes is how even you get your dubbing. Um, you can see that this thing has got a little bit of bulk to it, but when it gets wet, I mean, it, uh, it'll it shrink right down, right? So, like, Sparkle City or what? Look at that. What is the best fly for big rainbows in spring still water? Oh, I think somebody said earlier, you just use a hook and a worm, but that's all. That'll get you the big ones. <clears throat> all right. One more, no more. That'll get them. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, I'm a jerk sometimes. It's a joke. Joking. Joking. There is no one single fly for big fish in the spring or the fall or the summer or any time. Uh, being prepared with all kinds of different techniques and uh, presentations with a handful of patterns is uh, what you want to have. <clears throat> or a bucket of worms. So a tip, when you get down to the, like the end of your marabou feather, instead of just grabbing all this and tying it in like that, which will make it a little bit goofy, if you just split this apart, come in here and get rid of that tip. Now you're just left with the really flowy fibers. The tips on marabou feathers are fairly stiff. Like see how stiff that is? compared to this just nip that out of there and then you've got more tail material and you're good to go
So now I got all my flowy fibers in there <coughs> for the tail. All right, giddy up. And I'm grabbing like probably half the hook shank. I'm tying that wire in against at least a third for sure. So like that is not gonna pull out of there. And I give it some good crank and tight wraps. <clears throat> There's nothing worse than having a couple flies and taking them out. And all of a sudden you get into some fish. The fishing's really good. Your flies get beat up. You don't have any more. And now your days sucks, right? Anybody ever had that happen? I know I have. So that's the nice thing about these leeches and scuds. You don't have to tie a lot of them, but um, because they're gonna last you. And then again, don't forget your set wrap. Guys used to do that way back in the day with like chenilles and stuff. If you watch some old school tying stuff, They'll get a few wraps and then they'll crank and just kind of set, set that wrap. <clears throat> Do you strip it before you tie it in? Uh, pardon? <clears throat> yes, just like you would uh, anything else, a chenille or anything like that when I tie those in. I um I tend to expose the the cord so with these I expose the wire <clears throat> And you want to have kind of a shitty pair of scissors I have two pairs here right now uh, to be trimming that wire out of there I don't want to wreck your good scissors doing that cuz I am cutting the wire and then I'm just careful with these wraps because I want to pinch that wire against that bead and really get it tied off or have it sucked down into the bead like that one did that was perfect that's why I leave that little gap there when I'm tying in the marabou so <clears throat> so there is a video for a fly similar to this um, with a dub tail on the YouTube channel. Again, it's called the Beatdown. I just call this dubbing blend that because it's black and blue and purple. <clears throat> Bada bang. Super easy. So you can see, like, all this bugginess that's going on here, but everything is, see how it's all the same length? Top, bottom, side, like that's all consistent and it's hard to get that when you're making dubbing brushes on the go or if you're just twisting dubbing onto thread. You're not going to get this look and uh, fishability twisting dubbing onto thread like just doing it this way just will not happen. With dubbing, it's going to trap a little bit of air in there and kind of give it that real flowy look and you could tie you could be fishing a similar leech or a similar color but tied differently and just twist it all tight it's um yeah it's not gonna not gonna really be the same but there it is um upside down you can kind of see it a little bit better but yeah pretty sick little session this was i like tying this stuff um like i say it's uh I do tie a lot of crons, but leeches, between leeches and chronomids, that honestly, that's 80-ish percent of uh, what I fish in a season. The other 10% would be like maize and damsels, and then, uh, of course, boobies and blobs, so um, the odd caddis, that kind of thing, but the bulk of fishing is done with this stuff so there it is you're going to want to have these uh ready to go at ice off either this one is probably the first one that'll get uh tied on once the 
ice melts. So, yeah, it's uh, that's it. So uh, I guess we got to give them away. Can we can we skip the giveaway? Would anybody hate that if I just kept them? Because uh, I mean they're pretty fucking nice. <clears throat> No, I didn't think so. Okay, well, let's uh, do a little giveaway then, shall we? So I'm going to scroll through and up, down, up, down, up, down, and pick one. And um, if you are the winner, uh, send me a message and... Uh, with uh, your address and stuff so we can get them shipped out. Um, sometimes shipping is quick and easy. Sometimes it takes forever, so just bear with it. Do the same thing and get a hold of Susan. You can message her uh, here on Instagram as well. So just send her a message and uh, probably let her know if you want to get anything else while you're at it. I mean, she's shipping you the thread, so she could probably ship you something else too if you want. Um, but... Uh, yeah, there she is there. So message her and... All right. Can I get a drum roll? Drum roll, please. Holy shit, we had a lot of people in here. Or a lot of people talking tonight. Uh, what do we got? And boom. What do we got? We've got flying into tying. Flying into tying. Are you here? Anybody home? You are the lucky winner. <clears throat> I guess if you ask a lot of questions, you get better chances. Anybody home? Got to be here to win them. Oh, there it is. Okay, there you go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Congratulations. Flying into tying means you must be tying. So hopefully you'll uh, get good use out of the thread. And uh, maybe these flies will catch you some fish this spring. Anyways, give us a message, and uh, we'll get that stuff out to you. Congratulations. Um, I'll probably, maybe in the morning, probably not tonight, but in the morning I'll snap some pictures of these things and post them up so you can get a little bit of a better look and uh, that kind of thing before I send them out next week. Anyhow, <clears throat> how do you win? Well, I scroll up and down on the comments, and I plunk my finger on a person, and whoever that is wins. That's how. Perfect. Beginner, you got to start somewhere, so some thread will be of use to you. Uh, all right, guys and gals, thank you very much for stopping in. Appreciate you, as always. And um, I will probably ship this over to the YouTube channel. Uh, so if you missed anything, um, I mean, tie it in, wrap it up, tie it off, brush it out. That's all you got to know for these things, so... Um, check out Susan's uh, website. Lots of cool stuff there. Our website, customtroutflies.ca. You can get the brushes, flies, whatever you want. Anyways, check that shit out and uh, message me if you have questions about anything. Other than that, is it spring yet? <laughs> I can't wait. All right, guys. Everybody take care. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers and tight lines.